Ah, luxury. Isn't it a lovely thing to have? But what does it mean to you? Private jets, luxury yachts, million pound boat houses. Sure, but apparently, according to French brand DS, the creators of the car you see here, it also means this, the DS3 small SUV. And in this context, that plusher leather upholstery, fancy but incomprehensible switch gear and an irritatingly asymmetric centre console. OK, so perhaps we're being a touch harsh here because although the DS3 is a bit eccentric looking inside and out, it also stands out in a crowded marketplace of small SUVs, as does its name because it is called DS DS3, just like Couscous. So good, they named it twice. But is it? DS is a posh car brand originally spun off from Citroen, so it's part of the huge Stellantis group, which includes brands such as Jeep, Peugeot and Vauxhall. So underneath the Gallic bling, the DS3 is effectively the same car as the Peugeot 2008, Citroen C3 Aircross, Vauxhall Mocha and Jeep Compass. Other rivals from outside the Stellantis group include the ever-popular Ford Puma, the Renault Capture, and at the posher end of the scale, the Audi Q2. And if you would like to watch reviews of any of those cars, head to the Motorpoint YouTube channel. And while you're there, click like, subscribe, bell icon, catch all of our latest videos. But returning to our French friend here, the DS comes with a variety of petrol engines, the most appealing of which is the 130 horsepower 1.2 litre turbo petrol. There's also a fully electric version, which is pretty good value second hand, but a relative rarity. Or there's this version, which has a 1.5 litre turbo diesel under the bonnet. And although diesels are not very popular these days, it's a bit of a shame because this is a really solid motor. It's only got 105 horsepower, but it delivers 60 miles per gallon and almost effortless performance. Very solid and sensible, really. The interior of the DS3, or should I say DS DS3, is somewhat less sensible than the diesel powertrain. I mean, just look at it. We've got these bizarre window switches here and interesting or rather odd material. And then the diamond shaped air vents and switches. It's just all rather weird. And now this might really bother you. It bothers the cameraman. It doesn't bother me so much, even though I want every picture in my house to be equidistant. Anyway, I'm going off on a tangent. Look at this. We've got the gear stick, go for a straight line all the way up here, the switch gear, and this screen is off center. Is that a bit weird? Asymmetry aside, the spacing of the buttons and their layout actually makes them quite awkward to use. And although this looks like a huge touch screen, DS has been a little bit cheeky because these sections either side only show core functions such as the climate control settings. In reality, it's only this small screen here that displays sat nav and that sort of thing. Although if you go for a more modern version, you will find that some of them do have a larger screen where the sat nav and other things like that take up the whole screen. So do shop around. And even if it is a touch more awkward to use and a little low res, you do at least get built-in sat-nav, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. As you can see, you also get plenty of other gadgets. Even on lower end versions, you get dual zone climate control and automatic headlights. And if you go for a newer version or a fancier version, there are more toys still. Overall space in the front is also generous, but you might get a little annoyed by the relative lack of storage space. The door pockets are a bit tight, the glove box is unforgivably small, and the storage area beneath the centre armrest is, well, a bit small. At least it does feel genuinely quite premium in here, although the Audi Q2 is more sophisticated and better put together. Most people will find it a little cramped in the back here. Even me at five foot four and a half wouldn't really like it to be ah, a long journey because there's not much leg room. Headroom's not too bad, but if you were six foot, you might find it a bit of a problem. And this shark fin design just obscures a bit of my vision. So I can't enjoy the British countryside so much. If I was in a mini countryman, for example, there would be more space and a little bit more room to look out. When it comes to carrying luggage, meanwhile, well, we're sorry to say that almost every rival will offer you more boot space. There's 350 litres of room and that doesn't compare well with the 456 litre boot of the Ford Puma or even the DS3's sister, the Peugeot 2008, which offers 434 litres. 
There's even an awkward load lip, which can mean that loading heavy items in and out can be a little bit difficult. So DS is not really aiming at buyers that have loads and loads of luggage. So if you're interested in style over practicality, maybe that's okay. And maybe if it drives really well. Let's see, shall we? And, um, well, it's fine, it's smooth, and the low down punch of this diesel powertrain does make for easy progress, but it's not exactly sporty with this powertrain. We know from experience in other Stellantis Group models that the PureTech 130 1.2 litre turbo petrol engine is much more perky though, so if it's a sporty drive you're after, that's probably a better bet. On the other hand, if you're after decent fuel economy, this diesel engine can give you up to 60 miles per gallon in real world driving, as we mentioned earlier, whereas that 130 petrol is more likely to be in the high 40s. When it comes to handling, while the DS is softly sprung and very comfortable, it isn't much fun to drive if you're in a sporty mood with lots of body lean and a tendency for the nose to wash wide. The steering at least feels very well weighted. For many people, it's quite hard to put a convincing case forwards for a DS3. It's not that much fun to drive, its styling is divisive, and let's face it, it lacks the brand kudos that's going to tell your neighbours that you've got a premium car. But for some people, you will love its eccentricities and they make it the car that it is and you're quite happy to travel on that relatively untravelled road, then the DS3 could be the car for you, providing you can handle the cabin's quirks and the relative lack of luggage space. It is a comfortable, economical, well-appointed small SUV. And hey, if you don't fancy a DS DS3, the Motorpoint has a wide variety of small SUVs and other cars. As a matter of fact, check out the Motorpoint website where you will find its rivals such as the Skoda Kamek, Audi Q2, Ford Puma, and other cars.